Hello everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the mechatronics engineer here at EVO3D, responsible for the design and creation of the Rapid Fusion PE320 pellet extruder, user interface, which is what we have here behind me. And in this video, I would like to guide you throughout this user interface and explore the various functionalities the PE320 pellet extruder has to offer. Before we dive into the user interface, I would like to show you what I have here behind me. This is the Rapid Fusion Epicurus Pro control panel, an all-in-one solution offering plug and play performance with our PE320 pellet extruder. It has a metal solid casing storing the internal electronics and brains of the operation, a user-friendly touchscreen, as well as important safety features, including the emergency stop and the mains switch. So let's dive straight into the PE320 user interface. There are three main pages on the Rapid Fusion PE320 user interface. Number one is extruder temperatures, which is the default page, bed temperatures, and heating profiles. The extruder temperatures page allows the user to set and control our PE320 heater temperatures. Bed temperatures, likewise, allows the user to set and control our Rapid Fusion 1.2 by 1.2 meter heated bed. And lastly, the third page of heating profiles allows the user to store and set temperature profiles for multiple different materials. We're able to navigate through the different pages by clicking on the tabs in the navigation bar, like this. At the top header, we're also able to see the Rapid Fusion logo, as well as the emergency stop button. This emergency stop button is a soft stop, meaning that when pressed, it would halt and restart the internal firmware system, which is useful for resetting the system when it is not responding properly. There is also the hard physical stop located on the front cover of the control panel. This cuts all power to the electrical system and stops all activity. Let's move on to the core features of the extruder temperatures page. We can first see a picture of the PE320 extruder on the left, and moving on to the right, we are able to see that there are four heater zones, top, middle, bottom, and nozzle. We can see the state of these heaters, as well as the current temperatures. We can also set active and preheat temperatures. To do so, we'll click on one of the drop-down icons on the active column. By doing so, a temperature pop-up will appear with a number pad to enter the desired temperatures. I will enter a temperature of let's say 200 degrees and set the top heater to active by pressing on the active button. Immediately, we'll be able to see the extruder having a red pulsing glow, signifying that the extruder is active and heating up. The active state represents the temperature at which the extruder actively deposits material. The preheat state is the temperature at which the extruder is idle, for example, during printer pauses. And this temperature is typically lower than the active temperature to conserve energy and reduce oozing, but still at a high enough temperature to keep the pellets within the extruder semi-molten and ready for extrusion when needed. Clicking on both, will populate both active and preheat fields and set the extruder to an active state. We can also set temperatures for other heaters by navigating through the left bar within this temperature top-up, just like this. To exit this temperature pop-up, we clicked on the blurred background to escape this pop-up. And as we can see, the top heater is now in an active state with the current temperature settling at roughly 200 degrees, which is the desired active temperature we have just set just now. We are then able to change the state of these heaters by clicking on the state itself. So 
by clicking on the active state from the top heater, we transition to an off state. And in this off state, we can see that there is a warm yellow pulsing glow signifying that the heater is cooling down. Once the heater cools down below 50 degrees, the background of the extruder will turn white. To further cycle through the states, I will click on the off state and this brings us to the preheat state. Clicking on it again brings us to the active state and clicking it on once again brings us back to an off state. Now I will explore the various buttons we have on the screen. The first button I'm going to press is the preheat extruder button. By pressing on this, this immediately sets all the heaters to a preheat state and we can see that the temperatures for all heaters are starting to increase. Pressing the extruders heaters off button will immediately set the state of all heaters to off and the temperature will start to cool shortly. Pressing the boost pellets button switches on a solenoid valve allowing pellets to be loaded into the extruder via compressed air. The last button is the part cooling button and switching it on allows a constant flow of compressed air to the printed part to enable faster cooling. I will now move on to the second main page which is bed temperatures by clicking on the navigation bar. For bed temperatures we're able to see uh, the rapid fusion 1.2 by 1.2 meter heated bed and currently it is also glowing red as it is in its preheat state. Similar to the extruder temperatures we're also able to set the active and preheat temperatures by clicking on the drop down icon, which exposes the temperature pop up. I will now set a bed temperature of 60 degrees, which is a good temperature for printing PLA. And I will set the state to active. I will now exit the pop up by clicking on the blurred background, and we can see that the bed heater is in an active state. I will now turn the bed heaters off, and once again, all bed heaters will be off. Rapid fusion offers a maximum capacity of four heated beds and in that case we will be able to see bed zero, bed one, bed two and bed three populated on the screen. The third and final page is the heating profiles page which allows the user to store and set temperature profiles for different materials. On this page we're able to see the material column which stores material names as well as top middle bottom and nozzle columns storing the temperatures as well as an action column which stores two groups of buttons set and edit and each row stores unique temperatures for a specific material for example the airtech c 250 gf material has a temperature profile of 150 degrees for the top heater, 250, 260, and 270 for the rest of the heaters. We'll first explore the edit button. By clicking on the edit icon, an on-screen keyboard pops up and we're able to edit the material name as well as the temperatures for the four heaters. Let's edit the top temperature to 160 degrees. And now we can press the save button to store our setting. Now, pressing the set button brings us back to the extruder temperatures page and immediately sets all the heater temperatures to the desired settings. This marks the end of our video walkthrough for the PE320 user interface. I hope you've learned something about our extruder as well as how to control it. Thank you very much for watching.